in the second uh, mini lecture, we will look at the natural mode, and this is the third lateral dynamic stability mode. Okay, so we've uh, previously uh, studied the road damping and a spiral mode, and today we are going to look at the natural mode. Okay, before we um, look at the concepts of the natural mode, and first of all, let's see how it looks like in reality. So here is a video, and uh, we will see how when the aircraft is in a natural mode, how it, what it what happens to it. Okay, so you can see the aircraft is uh, uh, moving, and this is how the dash row looks like. Let's watch it again. So now it's tilting towards the left and towards the right. And so this is how it looks like. And you may wonder why it's called dash row mode. And this could be because the Dutch people are uh, really good at skating and it's kind of tradition in the winter time. And uh, showing here is uh, oil painting about the uh, people are skating on the frozen canals. And this painting, oil painting, is um, displayed in the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. Okay, from the movie at the beginning we've seen the Dutch row is actually an oscillation with coupled yaw and a row motions. So you have both motions, yaw in yaw and a row. And so now assume we have an aircraft, it's oscillating about its vertical axis, we also develop a rolling motion. Can you imagine that? And why? Because this is um, because the forward going wing gains more lift, whereas the rearward going wing has less lift. So let's see. Now we have this aircraft. It's oscillating about its vertical axis. So we have a row, uh, yaw in rate R. And so the left wing is going forward while the uh, right, right wing is going backward, rearward. Mm, so the forward going wing, the left wing, gains faster speed and the right wing is moving slower slightly. Okay, so this is top view. If we have a rear view, we know the left wing uh, moves forward faster, so it has a larger lift. In the meantime, the right wing moves slower because it's rearward going, so the lift on the right portion decreases and then the, there's a, a lift difference between the left wing and the right wing so this unbalanced lift will produce a rolling rate so that's how a yawing rate will produce a rolling rolling motion and that's why the dash row mode is coupled a yaw and a roll motion so they appear simultaneously okay so as a result each wingtip will execute an elliptical motion as viewed from cockpit, and this is the same for the nose and the tail. We, what, that, what it means, if we have a front view and in the dash row oscillation, the nose will move through an elliptical track, and the same for the wingtip, it will also move uh, through an elliptical track. So this is purely the description and analysis of the Dutch row mode. And also Dutch row is disliked by crew and passengers and is made worse by too much dihedral, insufficient fin area and heavy engines away, well away, far away from the fuselage center line. So that's uh, why the Dutch row is disliked by the crew and the passengers. Okay, so let's see some graphs describing the uh, the properties of the dash row. So we have the rotor angle. First, the first graph is about the rotor angle, and we can see the rotor first deflect um, to a large angle, and then there's a few oscillations, and eventually it's damped out. The rotor angle oscillation, 
and the second is a yaw angle acceleration, uh, yaw angle oscillation, and again it's stamped out the yaw angle. And the last two are the roll rate and the yaw rate. Why I uh, point them out simultaneously because we can notice the roll when the roll rate goes to its minimum, the yaw rate is nearly at its maximum. So there is a phase difference of 180 degrees, one pi. And so you can see apparently the Dutch roll is oscillatory mode and it's uh, has good damping. So it can be damped out uh, quite soon. About in here is about 18 or 20 seconds. The amplitude is much, much smaller than the original amplitude. So the handling for the Dutch roll is not so difficult. It should be well damped and controllable without exceptional pilot skills. So that's some uh, properties or features of the Dutch roll through the uh, actual flight data. So we've described the Dutch roll and then how can we um, analyze it analytically? So that's a question for now. And now we need to introduce a concept called uh, reduced order modeling. What does it mean? So for example here, assume now the Dutch roll mode can be modeled as a single degree of freedom in Yao. So originally Dutch roll contains Yao and a row. So we have two, two degrees of freedom. And now we are trying to simplify this problem and, and only consider one degree of freedom. That's the oscillation in Yao. So it's kind of reduce all the modeling. It's a, a, actually a quite popular um, or a quite popular methodology to study com complex problems. So since we are only considering Dutch roll as a single degree of freedom system in Yao, and uh, it only it's only contributed by two components to the yaw moment, that's NV and NR. One is the NV is the uh, size slip velocity change, give rise to the yaw moment change. And the second NR is uh, yaw rate change, give rise to the yaw moment change. So two com contributions. So we can write down the governing equations through Newton's second law, and it's quite familiar to us now. So it has two contributions on the right hand side. The first is IZ times um, per se second order. That's the angle acceleration. Okay, so now we know um, tending the phi, that's a side slip yawing, yawing angle. It equals minus V divided by big V. And so this is introduced through the when we um, define the side slip, positive side slip. Okay, and now since all the discussion is based on a small disturbance assumption, so tending phi is roughly the phi. And remember, once we apply this similarity or simplification, uh, the angle is always in radian, not in degree. Okay, so we have v is minus per se times v, so we can plug v into into the main governing equation. And now let's see r. What is r? r is the rate, change rate of uh, per se, the angle. So now the governing equation is shown in the ODE form. And uh, the unknown is per se, that's the yawing angle. And again, we are comparing this with the spring mass and damper system. And apparently, also quite straightforward, we have the natural frequency and the damping ratio. Once you have all the uh, aerodynamic derivatives and the, the IZ moment of inertia for any aircraft, and you can find its natural frequency and the damping ratio. And so this is a reduced order, um, reduced order modeling method for the industrial mode.